to welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Dezeal. Um, I work for the state of North Dakota. I'm an IT specialist in EdgeTech, which is the Educational Services Division within North Dakota Information Technology. Uh, NDIT is doing whatever possible to ensure that the entities we support are able to function in a wide variety of situations. For K-12 schools, we know our North Dakota administrators and educational uh, personnel are carefully navigating how to proceed, proceed with classes, communication, and collaboration while addressing concerns around COVID-19. Edutech's mission remains the same through all this, to, prov to provide technology services and leadership to improve teaching and learning in North Dakota pre-K-12. We are continuing that mission by provi provi providing this webinar series and are here to support our North Dakota K-12 community with support, training, and resources. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, Minecraft and um, one of the things that uh, we're going to kind of focus on is uh, how Minecraft has um, it adapted to uh, Minecraft Education Edition specifically has adapted to uh, remote learning um, and we're going to go through a lot of different resources today. I'm going to give you um, you know a lot of different things that uh, is going to kind of help you learn how to use Minecraft. Um, this isn't necessarily going to be a training on how to use Minecraft, um, but we're just going to go through some processes that are, um, you know, different with the setup. Because originally, when Minecraft Education Edition was developed, um, it was meant to be hosted on the same Wi-Fi network at the school, um, so only kids in that uh, on that network could join other worlds and so on, but um, since we're all in a different situation now, um, they've, they've made it so uh, kids can join other worlds uh, from their own homes. Um, and then also, I want to mention that Minecraft is free for anybody um, in our state um, that has a k12.nd.us Office 365 account, um, and they've extended that free membership until June um, just so teachers can have that uh, tool in their in their um, toolbox. So uh, first of all, um, I'm going to go over to uh, my my desktop here, and we're going to um, go through a few things. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go to the different uh, websites and so on. So I'm just going to switch over to my screen here. One more time. All right, here we go. Okay, so um, the the main website that uh, that hosts all of the resources for Minecraft Education Edition is going to be education.minecraft.net, and this will this is where you're going to download uh, the Minecraft uh, game Education Edition game from. So if you do have uh, devices, you know you have to download all of this. Um, if you want your students to have this, they're going to have to download it from this website. Um, it's not available yet on Chromebooks. Um, just be aware of that. It is available on iPad, um, Macs, and um, Windows machines. And, um, you know, some of the things I'm going to point out are very specific to um, being in the same world because the biggest, one of the biggest catches with um, Minecraft is uh, the fact that you can... Um, collaborate in the same world and then learn together within the same world. So on the education website here, uh, we can see where it says support um, and it says download right under support. So if you go to that page, um, it will have the platforms it's available on. Um, and then uh, one of the things that uh, they've kind of changed recently is uh, there's also a classroom mode to where the teacher can actually uh, go in and and kind of control the environment and see where your other students are uh, in the in the world, the Minecraft world, and kind of um, you know if they're if they get off track or something, you can always um, uh, get them to where you want them to be, or you can pause all of their games and so on. I'll, I'll give you a little run through of that uh, as we get into the game and and so on. But that uh, actual install for the um, classroom mode. Is, is separate and it's a the link is right below all of the downloads here um, it, it says classroom mode is available for Windows and Mac uh, learn more here so these are actual links to download that um, separate uh, separate install and and I'll show you how to um, open that and, and connect it to the game so you, like I said so you can kind of monitor 
uh, where your students are at uh, and other um, items that you can do with that tool. Um, so basically, I just want to um, show you the process for um, joining a world, uh, first of all, um, so that you can see, um, you know, the process for that. And then also, um, so you can kind of see uh, where, um, where you get those uh, different resources. Um, so, so we're going to go ahead. And once you do install Minecraft, uh, you will see, depending on your setup, um, you know, what device you're on and so on, uh, you will uh, see a little uh, box thing like you see down here. Um, I'm going to click on that and it's going to launch Minecraft Education Edition. Okay, and I'm going to sign in quick. And like I said, um, to, to actual, actually play the game, um, you know, I'm going to give you tons of resources that are uh, there for you to take kind of at your own pace. Um, there are a bunch of classes in the Microsoft Education um, community where you can go in and, and just kind of learn at your own pace on how to use Minecraft because there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, different facets to it. And, um, you know, it's kind of intimidating uh, coming from, uh, a, you know, when we're teachers, um, you know, the students are going to be the leaders a lot of the times on this. Um, so you're going to learn a lot from your students also. Uh, on this particular um, this game, but uh, the, the learning potential from what I've seen from the trainings I've done and from uh, researching this tool um, is the sky's pretty much limit uh, for this uh, for this learning tool of what you can use it in and, and the it, it gives that kid um, a different avenue to express their learning um, so they can um, you know maybe the the kid that doesn't always speak up in class or, or raise it, raise his hand, his or her hand, um, this might be an avenue for them to um, really express themselves and uh, show their learning in a different way. Um, so basically on your, one of the things, first of all, I want to mention is on this home screen here, uh, an important thing to remember when uh, you're joining the same worlds and so on, uh, you want to make sure you're all on the same version of the game. Now, on your home screen, uh, no matter what uh, device you're on, <clears throat> you will see the version down on the bottom right here. And you can see I'm running 1.12.60, and that's the most current version. Um, depending on your setup, and you know, if you have questions about that, it, it'll probably probably be up to you. Um, to talk to your tech coordinator if you do want to use this to see if your machines, if they are school devices, uh, of your if your automatic updates are turned on. On Macs currently, if you use Macs, um, there isn't necessarily an automatic update feature. So um, if you if you want to update the version of Minecraft on Macs, you have to make sure you go in, dump the program, and re-download it from the site where I showed you how to download it. So uh, I've seen some uh, forums on that um, that have been talking about, well, why isn't there the option yet to have that automatically update on Mac? So um, I believe they're working on something so you don't have to do that process each time. But basically, um, you know, there's a lot of different settings here. Um, and uh, the thing that I'm going to do uh, is just click, simply click on play because I'm just going to jump right into a game and um, I'm going to create a new world. Okay, and I'm just going to go to new. And, and you know, a lot the the resources I'm going to give you is going to explain um, everything, what everything means within the settings and so on. Uh, but I'm just going to name my world um, practice. Okay, so then I can recognize it within uh, my list of worlds when I come back to it. Okay, so and then uh, there's different game modes, um, survival, um, you know, like I said, you're going to learn the differences between the different game modes, but I'm just going to put mine on creative for now. Uh, that means you get access to all resources and all inventory items. Uh, you don't have to collect things to survive within the game. Um, and you know, if you're just getting started with this and you're having students do this um, to get started, you might want to, you know, um, start a creative uh, game mode just so you don't have to worry about other things 
in the survival uh, mode. So you have limited, unlimited access to inventory items and so on. Um, the uh, world type, you know, you can choose a different, uh, just a flat land. Um, this is going to be an infinite um, land. I'm just going to choose flat to, just so it's uh, easier when um, I don't have to move around a lot because there are a lot of trees in the and so on. Uh, you'd have to maneuver around, but uh, for this for this demonstration, I'm just going to choose flat. And um, and within Minecraft, uh, a lot of times when you have people in different places of the world in the same world, um, there's ways to just teleport to another player's uh, position and uh, based on coordinates. So um, I'm just going to show coordinates. Um, I'm not going to worry about this immediate respawn right now. I'm going to click on always day so then I don't have to worry about um, uh, nighttime and so on uh, for this purpose. So once I've got my, once I have my uh, settings in place, and, and like I said, the, when the resources I give you where you're going to take the online classes or what it, um, modules, it'll explain in more detail of what those uh, settings are. So once I click play, uh, it gives you some tips always at the beginning of the game um, as it's loading your game. Um, just gives you some uh, different tips and so on, you know, some useful um, items there. Uh, but once you're in a game here, um, you notice that uh, there are some animals already in here. Um, a lot of times there'll be different uh, items and so on. Uh, but the biggest thing I want to show you is how to uh, host a world. So now, like I said, if I depending on what Microsoft does after this um, uh, thing is over, if they're going to go back to it only being available on the same network. Um, but I'm not sure. We'll see when we get there. But it, currently, I'm here in uh, Northwood, North Dakota, and my uh, my teammate over in uh, Hazen, uh, Ben Nelson, he is going to be joining my world. Okay, and we're both, you know, obviously I'm running off my home network. He's running off his home network. And I want my um, students to be able to come into my world and um, I'm going to have them, you know, learn within my world. So, and I'm going to give you, like I said, resources that have pre-made worlds um, already set up. They have lesson plans attached to them uh, where you don't have to go in and create manually, uh, set up your own world manually. So, so basically, um, if I hit escape on my keyboard, it will bring up uh, a bunch of options here. Okay, and to host your world, so um, obviously how to play is gonna be a good one if you're just starting, you know, you're gonna wanna look at how to play. You can change the settings from within the game itself, um, but go within, uh, as you're in game play, uh, you can change settings, but I'm gonna go to this little uh, tab up top here where it says um, start hosting, okay? And it's going to, um, it's gonna let me know that once I start hosting, it's gonna create a code for me and I'm going to go to confirm. Now, the, the code pictures, and uh, Ben, if you wanna make sure you uh, remember this for uh, when joining, uh, it's gonna be a llama, uh, two Alex's, and then an agent. Okay, so that's the code. So now uh, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it over to Ben, and he is going to uh, uh, share his screen and uh, join my world. Okay, so there's, so this is what it looks like from Ben's end. Um, he's launching Minecraft. He's going to click on play, and instead of creating a new world, he's going to go to join world. Okay. Go ahead and click on that. And then he's going to click on the the set of codes that uh, were given that I gave him. Okay, and he's going to confirm that. And it automatically uh, notices that world because I'm hosting it, the practice. Remember I titled it practice and he's gonna hit confirm. Okay, and it's going to uh, load there. Uh, it's gonna locate the server where I'm hosting from. And then I'm going to go ahead and join. I'm going to uh, go ahead and share my desktop back. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to the game. And uh, there's Ben. <laughs> okay, so um, so it's very simple 
process for now if i had um other students you know they the spawn point as to where you begin um in a world when you enter a world is going to be uh, the same for everybody but if i was way over uh if i was away from ben and i didn't see him for example uh let's say i was way over here and i said ben i don't know where you are uh you can come on over um to my position here um 46 4, 16, you can see that up on the left there and there's uh codes that they can input um to uh teleport to you so uh so ben could you know automatically teleport to me instead of uh manually maneuvering uh to my position but like i said that's going to be um that's going to be um where uh, the coding aspect is going to come in, and and there's a class I will, uh, like I said, on the uh, Minecraft training site where it actually has that uh, uh, shows you how to do that. Now, um, <clears throat> like I mentioned, uh, classroom mode is going to be something that. Um, well, here comes Kelly too because he stole my code, but <laughs> now I've got two folks in my world here. Um, so. Uh, so now let's say you have a bunch of uh, students in here and, and, you know, it's getting kind of uh, crazy a little bit, if you will. Um, there is actually a uh, classroom mode where I can look at a map of where all my students are. And there's various ways to launch it, um, to open it, because it is a separate window um, be between uh, the classroom mode and Minecraft. Uh, but one way to do that, and if I hit backslash in my game, when I'm in my game, it brings up a command window. Okay, and the the this is where you would input coding and so on. Um, but there are also other things you can do. And from here, I can launch classroom mode. If I start typing classroom, it automatically tells me um, attempt to launch and connect to classroom mode. So it'll say... I need to type in classroom mode to do that. So if I click on that, it launches it automatically, it launches that program because I had it already uh, downloaded on my device. Okay, but you got to make sure that you download it first. And it'll have you sign in. Okay, and uh, wait one second here. Now, once you sign in, you're going to see uh, there's some server information, but what you want to click on is what do you want want to click on is the waiting room, okay? And it will give you a code, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to connect the game to this classroom mode um, kind of uh, tool that's going to help you kind of maintain the world. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this code, okay? So I'll click on the the copy there. Now, once I go back to the game here, and I'm again, I'm going to hit the backslash. Okay, and down in this command line, I'm going to paste that uh, that connection code in there. Okay, and once I paste that in there and hit enter, and I'm going to go back to my see now my classroom mode is open here um, on my uh, uh, taskbar down on the bottom. So once I go back to that, you can see a map here that has uh, different things, and, and I can see where Ben and Kelly are within this flat world. Okay, and as they move, I can track them. Um, I can also um, uh, drag and drop them to wherever. So if, if Ben goes, you know, up or he's trying to escape, I guess I can drag Ben off the player roster here and drag him back to. I want him to be by me, so I can go. Ben, come over here. Uh, so it gives me some control over the, over the environment as a teacher. Now, the students don't have this, obviously. Uh, they won't be able to, um, you know, open or install classroom mode and, and do this type of thing. So you have total um, kind of uh, control over this environment. Um, I can also send messages to my students. So if I type a message within... Um, Hi guys, and then uh, that will send and it will display on their screen. And then uh, if you want to type something back to me, one of you, uh, you'll see the chat history right in the um, chat here. So Kelly said hello, and then um, you have that log 
of uh, of your um, chat. Um, like I said, so those are just a and if a um, couple things you can do within the map. So as I'm moving my cursor, uh, you can see my coordinates change up on the top here. Um, so it's giving you that XYZ um, position. Um, now, if you are, uh, again, this is going to be in the resources I'm going to uh, give you, but how to, um, there's all kinds of different features within Minecraft uh, Education Edition, um, such as border walls, um, different special blocks that, <laughs> you know, uh, trigger something else and so on. Uh, but you can actually build um, those easily within uh, by using the coordinates and and uh, specific coding measures uh, within there. But like I said, I'll give you the resource on how to, you know, if you are setting up manually a world on how you could just build a big border wall um, so students can't go outside those uh, different walls and so on. Um, <clears throat> so there's a lot to it, but also in this classroom mode, if I click on <coughs> Again, excuse me. Um, if I click on the little ellipse here, uh, the more uh, area, um, you can see there's some options here. This big, this first one is a pause game for all players. So if I click on um, on, it'll it'll display that the game has been paused to all players. So if they're, you know, I want their attention and I'm, um, you know, chatting with them, <coughs> and I want their attention, I need to give them some instruction. I can pause the game instantly and have them uh, <coughs> pay attention. Um, also, uh, this disables chat for all players. So if I want to um, not be, have them have the ability to send chat messages, I can turn that on. Um, the perfect weather here <coughs> is going to, um, uh, you know, if that's off and you, well, in the original settings, when I set this game up, I said always day and so on, always sunny. Uh, but this here would control the weather. And then there are zombies and mobs and so on um, that you can have on and off. If you are in survival mode and you're having your students do something um, or they have to collect resources to stay alive and <coughs> and zombies and so on uh, come out, you want to, um, you know, control, you can control that through there. TNT, that's a big one. You're going to find out if this is something new, uh, the students, you know, um, especially Kelly, he likes to um, build TNT walls and, and destroy stuff. <laughs> but uh, that, you know, is something you can control as a teacher also, whether they're going to have um, availability of TNT and so on. But, you know, there's um, different things that they can do, um, you know, with uh, force and so on. If you're teaching about force and, and different things, um, you might want them to have the ability to use those types of uh, tools. And um, if a player to player damage and so on, um, for, and um, if you don't want your players to get damaged by falling off of cliffs or um, different things, um, you can turn that off. And then uh, world modification, you can have it. So if you do have um, um, different things that you don't want them to be able to um, change um, and so on, you could just make it so it's just a, a complete... Um, where they're going around and just learning, looking at information uh, boards that you planted. They, they're not able to build or change things about the world. And then the player to player damage, um, you can control that also. <coughs> so those are, um, and you know, this tool um, is always kind of changing. Uh, I've seen some different uh, discussions in the forums that say, uh, this is going to be updated and so on. Um, so you know, there you might it might be a different look to it um, coming up here. There might be some different features and so on um, with the classroom mode. Uh, so, so basically, you know, that's um, now. Like I said, this is going to depend on you know after this uh, remote learn after we're um, you know back in 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 schools. Um, if this is going to be just limited to <coughs> the same network like it was before, uh, but you know we'll, we'll see where we're at at that point. Um, but, but like I said, they've opened this up now to uh, being able to host from a different server, and then others, like I said, joining in from other locations. Um, so yeah, so that's a very quick run through. And again, the resources I'm going to give you, we're going to um, go into that. 
uh, right now I'm going to show you a ton of resources because, like I said, there's a lot to this game. Uh, we don't have enough hours in a day to go through everything um, on how to play the game and so on. Um, so, uh, and like I said, if you need um, assistance with this, um, you know, I'm going to give you our help desk at the end of the presentation, but, you know, feel free to reach out to um, our ITS team um, for support. And, and, you know, if you need some one-on-one -on -one training, um, just feel free to reach out and we can make that happen um, more on more specifics with this. So I'm just going to close out of this for now. Um, like I said, that was a very quick run through of uh, the actual Minecraft uh, game. Uh, but right now I'm going to go back to uh, the web and I'm going to go back to um, the MI, the Minecraft education website. Okay. Um, so back here in the window where I was showing you where to <clears throat> download those different, um, download the game and the classroom mode. Uh, this whole pay, this whole website um, has a ton of resources that are already there for you, um, already created. It gives you lesson plans, worlds that are already created um, so that you don't have to recreate the wheel every time um, if you can find something that you that applies to your classroom. Um, so one of the nice things is this class resources tab here. Um, now this is where you're going to find all of the resources for you also. Um, to get trained on how to use this tool. So if you click on get trained, it's going to go to the um, resources, educator resources, and it has learn to play. Uh, there's a community of uh, teachers out there that, that post to blogs and so on, and, and you can ask questions and so on um, and from educators around the world that are using the Minecraft as a learning platform. So you can join that community and uh, you know get help through that um, and then there's fine lessons uh, like I said there's uh, right now there's over 500 lesson plans across subjects to already that are already there for you to use with your students and you know you if you find something that's uh, close to what you need you know feel free to adapt it to to um, <coughs> to your specific learning um, situation um, there's build challenges that's always a good one um, to get started with your students, just to get them familiar with uh, the educational version of Minecraft, uh, where they actually um, go in and, and they challenge themselves, challenge against each other. You can make it into a fun competition um, where, you know, they would receive certain amount of resources and they would have to um, build something or, um, you know, a situation where they'd have to collect things to survive and they only get a limited amount of resources to, um, you know, survive or uh, create something. Uh, tech support, there's going to be um, a lot of information, um, you know, about the tech specs. Now, um, with this new, um, or with the platform now where you can join uh, others from different locations, um, you know, depending on the, the setups at um, individuals' homes, uh, you know, if you do come across a situation where they're just not able to uh, join or, or, you know, get uh, in a world or they're having difficulties, um, you know, you're going to want to make sure you look at that tech support. And I'll, I'll give you, there's a specific page within this website uh, for, re, for remote learning resources, and it gives you a rundown of, you know, network or router settings, you know, if, if it comes to that. Um, if there is an issue with a router at, at a ch uh, where a child is learning from, um, you know, configurations and so on. And that's all that's going to vary quite a bit based on home network setups and so on. But for the most part, what we've been uh, doing um, as we've been testing this, uh, it, it has worked very smoothly. Um, so, um, so as far as uh, I haven't had to change anything about my router settings at home here, um, Kelly and I have joined the world. Uh, as you saw live, Ben and I have joined the world um, without any difficulties. So, um, but if you do have difficulty, you know, we're, you're going to want to make sure you reach out and uh, we can help you out a little bit, um, depending on, you know, like I said, there's a lot of different 
router settings and, and even if they even if a home network people at home even have access to change those settings you know sometimes uh, they'd have to call their internet service provider but but uh, like i said if you have questions about that feel free to reach out and we can uh, steer you in the right direction um, again some of the knowledge base here it has some uh, faq um, it's going to have a lot of uh, good information um, game features uh, teaching tips and information on how to help teachers in the classroom um, different pricing and licensing like i said this is free until the end of june right now for any um, teacher that has a microsoft education account office 365 account so anybody in north dakota that is using their uh, k12.ne.us account would be eligible for a uh, receipt or a student for that matter um, would be eligible for uh, receiving this tool for free until June as of now, the end of June. Um, and then, like I said, getting started, um, there's just ton of, a ton of resources. I'm going to go back to the home page and uh, just point out that under these class resources, uh, when I was under the get trained option here, um, you saw the uh, learn to play and then the join the community. So if I click on learn to play, it's going to take me directly to the Microsoft Educator Center uh, and the entire, um, the entire My Minecraft Journey course on, on the Microsoft Educator Center is, that's where it links to. And it's got all of the um, different lessons, uh, all, uh, you know, and if you're signed in to your uh, Office 365 account like I am, uh, you can receive badges and so on as you're taking these different courses. Um, you can also receive credit uh, through us. If you take a screenshot of the completion of this, uh, we can actually give you hours towards credit um, based on what you, you can take anything you want out of the Microsoft Educator Center because uh, Minecraft isn't the only tool that it offers training on uh, you can re receive training on any office product um, so if you find interest in taking courses from here uh, just make sure you um, screenshot your completion and your hours <coughs> and uh, we can apply those to your um, dashboard within edutech um, so right here it's got all the different um, facets and the learning objectives um, where to start you have your uh, my Minecraft lesson one, why why use Minecraft gives you some good tips on um, the the power of this learning tool. Um, and then uh, building communities with Minecraft, um, Playcraft, learn. So it goes through each thing and then it gets into um, uh, the coding aspect of Minecraft um, because that's going to be um, a huge uh, advantage to using this version of Minecraft is the ability to use coding uh, within Minecraft and you can teach your students how to code uh, right within the game. Um, so so that's a, a great, great resource for um, learning how to use the game. Now back on uh, back on the site here again, you saw that that specific uh, under class resources find a lesson. Um, so if I go to find a lesson, it will give you um, different subject kits. Um, so let's say you're a science teacher. If I'm teaching science, I'm gonna click on science and uh, we can look at all of the um, already made lessons that are out there. Uh, one of the advantages of Minecraft is uh, the education version is that you have all of the um, elements uh, in your inventory blocks. So <clears throat> you could actually have students build the uh, periodic table out of blocks <coughs> um, when you're teaching that concept in science. It kind of narrows them down to uh, the different uh, grade levels and so on, or age levels, and what uh, specific areas that applies to. So uh, renewable energy, you know, that's uh, bringing a lot of what we do here in North Dakota right to um, right into Minecraft with uh, renewable, renewable windmills and so on. Um, so there's a lot of uh, information here that you're going to find yeah, applies exactly to what you kind of to what you teach in your uh, different grade levels. 
So, um, so the, and once you click on, and you'll see the resource. So this is a whole lesson. So let's say characterizing elements here. I want to view the lesson if I click on it. Um, give it a second here and it will explain, give you an overall um, overview of it. So learning objectives, uh, you know, become familiar, familiar with those <coughs> different properties, elements, and then the uh, guiding ideas, lesson seven, um, gives you some you know different uh, on how to kind of direct this lesson and then it gives you the student activities possible with this and then on the external references a lot of times it will have a world for you um, it has a download the support world so you could download that open it up and that, that's a world that's already created it's got different uh, videos and so on that go along with the lesson so everything is already there uh, for you to get started um, building a Rube Goldberg machine is another lesson, math and science. Um, there's just a ton of uh, already pre-created lessons for you. Like I said, if you find something that's really similar to what you want to do, you know, um, to find, you can always find ways to kind of adapt it to your needs um, within these lessons. So uh, <clears throat> up on the top here, again, um, that was just a uh, you know one specific area, but uh, if I go back to find a lesson, uh, you will see specific uh, you know grade levels. Now, if I keep or uh, sorry, um, specific subject areas. If I keep uh, scrolling down here, um, you will see search all lessons and then uh, featured lessons down. Uh, this one that I want to point out: remote learning with Minecraft. This is a brand new resource. Uh, in relation to um, the situation that we are in with remote uh, learning remotely. So if I click on that resource, it's going to have <coughs> all the specifics that I've been kind of mentioning here. Um, this set of resources is designed to support remote learning using Minecraft Education Edition. Um, it's got uh, different um, resources, objectives, uh, what it, you know, what it is that guiding ideas um, you know obviously this applies to many different areas in um, stem based areas and, and uh, the list goes on and on but the remote learning um, guide so that external reference that i just clicked on has your um, kind of a lot of the stuff that i've been talking about um, so a quick start check that your account is eligible uh, Minecraft is available through June 2020 for all ge all educators and learners who have a valid Office 365 education account. Um, how to download the app, um, tips for teaching with Minecraft. There's all kinds of resource links within here. Um, exploring free lessons and curriculum. Um, and then it goes into some specifics for, uh, you know, troubleshooting at the very end here. So it's got a ton of stuff here um, that you know for support um, technical support and so on um, if you are having problems uh, connecting to others and so on so that's going to be a good resource for you to be aware of and um, and uh, make sure you take advantage of what's already there for you um, as you're getting started um, there's also a bunch of resources that you're going to find on uh, our specific uh, page on Edutech's website. So I'm going to go over to um, Edutech's website. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then uh, you'll notice on our home page on edutech.nodac.edu, uh, there's one, uh, one item on the banner here. And if you click on read more, uh, you'll find all of our um, webinars that we have been uh, hosting here, previously held webinars and video tutorials. So everything we've done up to this point on uh, uh, things that we presented on through these webinars you'll find here and then once uh, we get this one uploaded <coughs> you'll find it here also but there's a very important page um, within this um, within this area and it's called resources to enhance distance education and if i click on collated resources uh, from education partners you will find um, a, a lot of stuff here and these links lead to uh, many different uh, things that we've created um, things that are there uh, a lot of good videos on uh, quick tips on you know using different uh, Microsoft Office 365 tools 
<coughs> and then, uh, but the one I want you to look at is our Minecraft table or Minecraft EDU. So all of the stuff that I just talked about, uh, lessons on the My Minecraft journey, uh, you know, this links directly to them one by one. Um, so each lesson within that uh, eight and a half hour training um, is, is linked here. Uh, that remote learning uh, document that I showed you that has all kinds of information in there uh, about um, you know how to set it up, how, how everything works with Minecraft on different uh, networks and so on. And then the Minecraft Sway is something I used at my trainings I developed um, uh, that I've you know been hosting throughout the years. Um, so you can look at that resource also. Uh, we do have uh, quite a few um, other uh, upcoming webinars. Um, and um, I just want to touch touch on those really quick. I'm going to back up one page here. OK, and uh, so uh, we have one more of these. If you know somebody that uh, wants that couldn't make it this morning, um, we do have one coming up at 430. Uh, today and then tomorrow there will be some uh, um, information presented on PowerPoint and some of the add-ons and so on. Um, you know, there'll be a lot of great tips on using built-in features and add-ons in PowerPoint. And then on Friday, I'll be hosting two on Microsoft Stream um, on, on video recordings and um, it's kind of like your own YouTube channel within Microsoft um, to get your videos if you are using video. Uh, you're going to want to look at the, the webinar on stream coming up. Um, <coughs> at this time, uh, I have 1042 on my end here. Um, I'm just going to ask uh, the other folks here. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. Um, and I'm going to um, ask if there is any um, questions that uh, we have, uh, that you folks have, if there's any posted in the, um, the chat window, um, or if you want to unmute and ask a specific question, um, go ahead and do that. Uh, ben, do we have any questions in the chat? No, nothing has come up in the chat so far, Steve. Okay. All right. Um, if you, like I said, if you if you reach out, um, you know, you can always contact us at help at k12.nd.us. Uh, that Steve, bottom. We did just get a question in the chat okay. about whether or not this will also work on Xbox or if it will only work on computers. Uh, the education version is only on um, the computers. Is that that's the what you needed? Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So um, that that bottom link there on under resources is um, that page I showed you on our EdgeTech page. Um, for those online resources for educators. Um, so if you get, you know, a chance to look through those, there's a lot of great um, tools on there and stuff that, that are um, uh, a lot of our partnerships um, through NYSERC and, and code.org. Uh, you'll find a lot of the resources within there. Uh, but again, I, I'd like to thank you for attending today. Um, uh, as always, we're here to assist you in being successful. Do not hesitate to contact our help desk. Uh, you see the e email address right there or reach out to any of us ITS members. Um, thank you again for helping us out or attending this today um, and have a good day. Thank you guys. You bet. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Uh -huh.